Bam. There we go. <clears throat> so, Robbie, here we go. Everything Comics, Bullseye Bob, Pop Culture Philosophers, Rockin' Robbie Billups. I have been so looking forward to this, brother. How you doing? Oh, I am doing fantastic, Bob, and I am looking forward to this as well. I love your channel, and I love what you and Bueller do on the Comics and Coffee Show, so I'm super pumped to be here. Yeah, me too, me too. And, and the same thing, I, like I was just telling you offline, man, I, I am so inspired by your show. Uh, it, it starts my week and uh, lets me know stuff that's not on my pull list. And then I, I always, I, I love your reviews, man. Your passion always comes out. So, um, and then yeah, knowing that you're a huge Dr. Doom fan, Cowboys fan, <laughs> brothers, you know mother, mothers, man, that's, that's all I got to say. So I'm, I'm, I've been really looking forward to this. Yeah, I think we have a lot in common. We both love <clears throat> Dr. Doom, good mm -hmm. comic books, and the Dallas Cowboys. How about Come them, on, right? Man. I just hope Come we on. can sign Dak, get Dak yes. on yes, a good absolutely. deal. And I, I didn't – what's yeah. that? Oh, I, I was going to say I didn't like that the Emmett Smith was saying that Dak should kind of try to take less money to, like, fit there and stuff, and I don't know. I have mixed no. feelings about that. Like, Dak I needs to too. get what Dak needs to get. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, in his – his third year, he 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 was two yards shy of, I mean, breaking the you know uh, uh, all time passing records for a cowboy, and the other other guy was a Hall of Famer. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and Dak is the future of of the brand. Absolutely. You know, like like they need to get Dak. They need to do whatever it's going to take to keep get Dak. If we have to lose Amari, that would suck. But we'd find somebody else. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? And Dak Absolutely. is. He is something else, and he has not yet had the opportunity, I think, to shine. Of course, of course I'm, I'm biased because I'm a Cowboys fan. Oh, of but, course, of course. Yeah. But I can't help but wonder with Mike McCarthy, the quarterback guru, yeah. what, what's going to happen now. I'm really excited because when he was with Green Bay, he owned the Dallas Cowboys. Absolutely. You know? like, Absolutely. He, he kicked our tails every single time almost. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Before we get into the comics, I'll just say this. I listen to a lot of Cowboys podcasts and I, I listened to hanging with the boys with Nate Newton. And uh, he was talking today uh, or actually yesterday about there's a different feeling uh, of players walking down the hallways, you know, for the last couple of years, those players are walking out with some swagger, you know, and he's all they ain't done nothing. He says, but now with this new coaching change, these guys are walking down the hallway. Doesn't they ain't got no swagger. Yeah, and right. uh, the feeling around the area is, is they're going to have to fight for their jobs and earn the right to be a cowboy. And I loved hearing that. Yeah, I like hearing that too. And they're really poised. I mean, on paper, we were one of the best teams last year, but it didn't make sense how it all played out, you know. Yeah. And it just because we didn't. I, I, I like Jason Garrett, right? But like, we should have let go of him a long time ago. And I get that Jerry has this kind of thing where he likes to hold on to people or yeah. whatever. Or like people that he's like part of the family, right? Right, right. And Garrett's part of his football family, but uh, I really feel like he just—I don't—I don't like. I never saw him fired up. Never, you know, you never, you never saw him. And so if he's not fired up on the sidelines, if he's not—I mean, I saw that this year, but I think it's because he knew that his his job was kind of on the line. Yeah. But uh, I like you need somebody who's going to inspire people, and I don't Absolutely. know if McCarthy is that kind of a dude. Right. I think he's better on defense than, than Garrett thinks, you know, Garrett's a, an offensive guy. Right. And, and now he's at the giants. Right. So we'll right. see what happens there. I guarantee you though, he's going to be in the head office of the Cowboys in the next like five to 10 years. Right. Easily. Easily. He's Jerry oh, sure. Boy, Always will be. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so everybody, cool deal, everybody's man. like cowboy. What are y'all talking about football? I thought we were talking about Dr. Doom and Daredevil. <laughs> I know. <huh? laughs> it's okay, folks. We're going to get going. We do have a few people who have joined the chat. We got Hero and the Kid. How you doing? Uh, we got Smoke and Joe, 32927. And uh, thank you guys for joining. And uh, I'm uh, just, I'm, I'm raring to go, buddy. Here we go. So what do you want to start with first, man? Because we got, we got some Doom. We got some Daredevil to talk about tonight. Let's go alphabetically. So we'll do oh. Daredevil first, right? <laughs> Sounds good. Cowboys to Daredevil. <laughs> Cowboys to Daredevil. A absolutely. So, um, you, know, you know me, I've been a, a longtime Daredevil fan. Um, you know, uh, my love for him started uh, with seeing a few different covers back when I was a kid. I think the, the first Daredevil books I wanted to read uh, were these covers that showed Gladiator on the cover with those buzz saws on his arms. Melvin Potter, man. And uh, those inspired me to pick up some Daredevil books. And I've just, I've fallen, I fell in love with the character and I've, I've been a fan ever since. 
Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't know about me is I'm Irish. Um, I'm a pastor, so I have a consciousness towards God. Uh, I come from a boxing family. And uh, so that's you know, perfect for you, Bob. I'm Daredevil, bro. <laughs> no wonder you love Daredevil. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, um, so yeah, I, I just, I'm, I, I'm very, very, very much in love with the character. And uh, so I, I, there's many different runs that I actually have just absolutely enjoyed over the years. When did you first get into Daredevil? Like what, what, what was going on? What, what issue number, what year, whatever? You know, um, so when I first started, um, it was just at the end of Jerry Conway's run. Uh, okay. and, and I, 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 I probably liked the earlier stuff. I wasn't a fan of uh, having um, Black Widow in the book back then. And, um, and then, you know, I, I, I loved what Jerry Conway was doing with the character by taking him to San Francisco. Um, you know, he was kind of a, a hot commodity at the time. And um, he had kind of just did something different than all the rest of the Marvel books. He took a character out of New York, which I thought was kind of cool. And, um, and so that's kind of where I started. And I can't say that it really uh, was my favorite. I fell in love with the character, but the actual reading of the stories didn't happen until that first, that first Frank Miller uh, uh, era started. When that so you, happened. You read that as it was going on? Yeah. Oh, man, I envy you. That's super cool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, that's, you know, that, that's the time that I was, I, I was into comics and, and I got to tell you when, when, when Frank, I, I still can't believe the stuff that that dude got away with. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, right. I mean, it was some pretty shady stuff. It's a pretty brutal stuff going on in those books. Uh, and, but he revolutionized the character and uh, I, have, I've just been an absolute fan ever since. Yeah. Frank Miller revolutionized the character and he revolutionized comic books. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. The first, the first Daredevil stuff I read was when uh, he changed to that armored costume in the '90s. Yeah, <laughs> right. Everybody was into that. You know, I was like in my, I was like pre-teens or whatever. It was like eleven or twelve. Yeah, and that was perfect. That was aimed for me, I think. Oh. And so I was like, yeah, I'll read Daredevil, and uh, and I was like, it's okay, you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was when Marvel Knights happened in '98. I was seventeen. I was a little bit older. I was really, I was really into comics. I've been reading these things since I was five years old. Yeah. And, uh, and so I was like supremely into the craft of it and the, the mm -hmm. artistry of it. And so when Marvel Knights happened, I was so excited and I was a huge Kevin Smith fan because clerks and mall rats and chasing yeah. Amy and that from that moment on, I just fell in love with it. And then I think that and then I went back and I read the Frank Miller stuff. I read the Denny O'Neill stuff. Mm -hmm. I read some of the Stanley, um, Bill Everett, of course. Yeah. And yeah. then, uh, Gene Colan. Gene um, Colan. Oh my God. I read a lot of that stuff in my, uh, essential collections, those black and white ones, you know? Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. I love those. You get so many comic books mm -hmm. for just like 15 bucks, you know, like right. 20 old school comic books that you couldn't get unless you were getting those masterwork hardcovers, you know? Right. Right. And so it was super cool to, to have those. And I still have some of those. Um, but I, that's when I decided I was like daredevil out of all the Marvel comics, has been the most consistent throughout his history. I, I, you know? I would absolutely agree. Oh, absolutely, absolutely agree. yeah. And when Frank Miller came on, came in, I mean, you just have a a bunch of really good runs. You got some some stuff in between, yeah, right. Yeah. But like, oh my goodness, like Daredevil, like has just been so good, especially since that Marvel Knights relaunch. Oh my gosh, yeah. Aside, I mean, uh, yeah. Aside from the Andy, I'm sorry, but aside from the Andy Diggle. Um, Shadowland you. stuff. Aside <laughs> from that, it's been pretty much top notch ever since. It really has. It really has. I mean, even even when um, you know Mark Wade took the character back to his more lighter campiness, uh, I I enjoyed that very much. To, you know, very much so as well. Oh yeah. And, and so I mean, it really has been good for a long time. Um, just really quick, I'm going to acknowledge some people who just hopped in the chat. We got Two Gun Pedro, pew pew, and we got Bear Island Comics. How you doing? And uh, yes, sir, we are talking about Daredevil and uh, <laughs> about time someone did this. Absolutely. And then uh, Smoking Joe asks, uh, Bob, are you a Catholic? I'm non-denomination. Uh, big Francis Chan and Brandon Manning fan. Love Francis Chan. I don't know much of Brandon Manning's uh, stuff and I am non-denominational. Uh, and I, uh, I eat up pastors like they are uh, loaves of bread. I, I, I listen to uh, stuff all the time. So 
Um, but uh, being two gun says he never really collected Daredevil, but I got a lot of, a lot of respect for him, bro. We got to get you into it. <laughs> oh Dude, yeah. There are so many good runs. We're going to tell you tonight right now, actually, I, I think we're about the best ones to read. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I'll, I'll just ask you straight up, Robbie, what is your favorite run on Daredevil? Oh, Frank Miller. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Frank Miller. I mean, oh. there, you just can't beat it. The the whole Electra saga, mm -hmm. I think that's the best bit of it. You know, when, sure. when you first start reading it, and so if you get the omnibus collections or whatever, it's mm -hmm. going to start off and it's going to be okay. Right. But Frank Miller was just the artist at first, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so then when he takes over the book, though, mm -hmm. and and when you look at it with context at what was going on in the industry at the time, it wasn't just great stories. It was supremely innovative. Right. Like you were saying, it was breaking boundaries as far as brutality goes, as far as even at times morality and how, oh, yes. how adult these books could get. And I'm not talking about just like sex and violence. I'm talking about like mature themes. We're talking about a dude, you know, Frank Miller was the one, like, I know he was mentioned that, that Matt was Catholic, mm -hmm. but Frank was the one that really kind of took that and was like, yo, this is weird. He dresses up as the daredevil, as a devil. He's Catholic. If he's Catholic, he's going to be filled with guilt. Right. right. You know, and, and so like he really put that into the character. He brought in the kingpin, you know, which was a decent, but let's be honest, top B list Spider-Man villain. Absolutely. And then brought him and made him Matt's number one villain. And Absolutely. that run is so amazing. And and then that the whole Electra saga is probably my absolute favorite. But Born Again, oh, oh my oh my goodness. <laughs> Born Again is one of the best too. And, Absolutely, and even when he did Man Without Fear with John Romita Jr., that stuff I, was great too. I, I love that too. I, I mean, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of people that have their own feelings about Man Without Fear, but uh, I, I got to tell you, I love the retcon of his of his origin. I love the fact that he, you know, he, he put him in the black togs for for you know for most of of that run, and it really got into the heart of a lot of things. I I, I didn't so mind, you know, the retcon of you know his dad smacking him. Uh, inside of that, even the way they played off of that and his sense of justice coming from that, I, I, I was okay with that. Uh, and all the way leading up to, you know, him taking on the costume, phenomenal run. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, Frank Miller's run on Daredevil, not only was it, it groundbreaking, not only was it in your face, but I remember the buzz going around at the time. People were flipping out every issue that this book came out because you never knew what was going to happen next. Uh, and I mean, we got some imagery on those books that I, you know, I don't think anybody could get away with nowadays. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you got, you got black widow with a hairdryer cord wrapped around her neck on the cover. Of one, yeah. You know, and you, you, there's just no way you, you'd see that nowadays. And, and uh, he was in your face with uh, you know, uh, uh, social justice issues that uh, was so far ahead of its time. And uh, you know, if you're going to pick a run on Daredevil, that's the one that's going to define everything. Oh, it's amazing. And, and he started like going against the idea of thought balloons, you know, and thought yeah. bubbles, right? Yeah. Started making it more like it was actual narration that's going on. And I mean, look at how that changed the industry. Absolutely. You know, we, we don't even have thought balloons anymore. Nope. nope. At all. <laughs> and considered... I, Old school. Yeah. And some could say that that's a good thing. Some could say that's a bad thing. I think it's more than more. I think it's more or less a good thing because it was something that usually people that weren't into comics would read comics and be like, this is what? Right. right. Why is he thinking so much? And so like eloquently while he's fighting this dude. Right. right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, uh, it, you know, the, the narration captions and just the, the way that he would, you know, everybody did the, uh, you know, I mean, Jack Kirby created the Marvel style of how to like tell a story, you know, yeah. and Will Eisner took that and it was the Marvel way still, it was still big and it was explosive and it was exuberant, but he also took that, like the subtleness of someone like Will Eisner. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was able to break it more than just a six panel grid or a nine panel grid. And he like would do these like cinematic scope esque kind of panels. And he would like have each moment, like he was a master of pacing. And I know a lot of people nowadays, they kind of like scoff at his work a little bit. They're like, Oh, that looks silly and dumb. But I'm like, yeah, I get it. He's, he's a lot older now. He's got some health problems. Right. But 
what he did for the industry as far as sequential storytelling, yeah, that cannot be understated whatsoever. He is just as much up there with a Will Eisner or a Jack Kirby, um, for sure. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And more, more um, influential in the industry than a Todd McFarlane or a Jim Lee. And no shade on them because I love Lee and McFar. Well, I like McFarlane a little bit, but uh, <laughs> but like Miller is like levels above that. Like they wouldn't exist without him. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I I, I don't know of many um, writers or even comic books that people will mention uh, like they have the you know the Dark Knight Returns when they t talk about you know they carried it around like it was their Bible. You know, yeah, I right. mean. I've never heard of any other comic book being mentioned in, in those type of terms. And so what, you know, what he did for, for comics, you can, you're right. It can't be understated. Uh, you know, again, I'll, 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 uh, um, I'll, 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 uh, mimic what uh, Kevin Smith said, which is if there is a Mount Rushmore of comic book faces, <laughs> Frank Miller's face has got to be up there. Oh, for real. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's like Eisner, Lee, Kirby and Miller. Absolutely. You know, and, and then I you have to have say, a, even though most people don't like him, Neil Adams as well. Well, yeah. 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 Neil Adams, solid, you know? Yeah. And uh and Denny O'Neill, if you want to bring in Neil Adams, you know, and Denny O'Neill had a, a pretty decent run of, of Daredevil stuff there. Absolutely. Um, not as not as memorable as some of the Miller stuff, but I think that him and uh and Nascenti kind of kept that vibe alive for a while after yeah, Miller left. So. I mean, you know, I think, um, you know, Denny O'Neill had the harder job because, you know, his was right on the tail of, of Frank Miller. And it's like, you don't want to duplicate that. Uh, yeah, that was the buzz, but you want to keep the, you know, the saga going. I think he did a very decent job. Um, and then I think, you know, and Nusenti took a lot of the themes, you know, that were, were continuing and he, she amped them up a bit and uh, brought in a, you know, a few new characters, a few new concepts, but that began the cycle of the breaking down of Matt Murdock and the rising like a phoenix, born again, uh, yeah. over and over and over again. Over and over and over again, <laughs> even until today. Yeah, that's still right. Still going on, still going on. <laughs> and that, that issue in the Frank Miller run where it's Bullseye, after, after Bullseye kills Elektra, and he's like basically in like a full body cast, Right. And Daredevil goes and plays Russian roulette with him. Uh, one of my favorite issues, man. Like, no kidding. That's a great issue, you know? And, and then the cover, the one where he's like, no more Mr. Nice Guy. That's right. That's yeah, and that's right. like, there's a Vault comic book called Friendo. And Vault likes to do these, like, homages to famous comic book covers. And Friendo did the homage to that cover. Yeah. And it's yeah. absolutely, that that issue was amazing. Because it was all these times, you know, even when, you know, Jim Shooter's in charge of Marvel and all that stuff. And like, yeah, they, they, they're getting a little bit more gritty. The Punisher has been introduced, but like, and you know, Spider-Man, the death of Gwen Stacy and all that stuff. But, uh, like nothing felt like the daredevil run no. at that time that was going on. And that issue where you have your hero contemplating killing either himself or this dude, right? <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> and that's commonplace now. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, so ahead of his time. So ahead of his, he can, I mean, you know, and, and again, the feeling that, you know, was the buzz that was going around at the time. I mean, it, it surpassed, I mean, cause you know, at the time, you know, the biggest books out there were X-Men and, and Teen Titans. Yeah. And, you know, when his stuff came, it, it, it just blew everything out of the water and that's all anybody could talk about. It so. changed what a superhero comic book could be. Absolutely. And that's exactly why DC came to him and said, Hey, you want Batman? Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then he did Batman year one. And then they were like, Hey, you want daredevil again with that same artist and born again and born again is oh. quintessential daredevil. If you want, yeah. I, I would say that if anybody wants to read just one thing, because it's the Frank Miller run, like the initial run, it does start a little slow. Right. Yeah. yeah. But if, if one person needed to read one book from daredevil, to, to understand the character, where the character, like what his stories are, what his, what his, what his arc is, what his purpose in the Marvel universe is. And in mm -hmm. New York city, um, it's, it's, it's a uh, born again. That, that's Absolutely. like, that's everything just distilled into what, however many issues it was. That book is amazing. It, it really is. You know, and, and again, in your face, you know, revolutionary stuff. I mean, no comic book at the time had the the theme going on where, you know, a, a love interest of your main character is going to sell his identity for a hit of heroin. I mean, how shady is that? 
I know. Uh, you know, it's and, really and that, bad for Karen Page, right? Her <laughs> her her involvement in that, especially <laughs> especially in the Kevin Smith run. I think they really kind of d- did a lot with that character outside. But yeah. Karen was such like if you read the Silver Age stuff, the mm-hmm. the Stan Lee stuff, like you're like, what happened to Karen? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> but I mean, if really, I mean, throughout all the runs, I mean, at some point or another, she does treat him pretty badly. Well, yeah. But he treats her badly too. Yeah. Know, he does, especially he does. in some of those early issues. For sure. <laughs> in, in the sixties, they got away with a lot of stuff, I guess. But Absolutely. yeah, it was, dude, that was crazy. I remember the, reading the first, the first time I read born again. And I was just like, this is just, this is real and gritty, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And but, comics can be more than that, but that's sure. really, that's just, they weren't okay. like that at the time, you know? Born Again was one of those those first comics that really, uh, you know, um, tugged on my heartstrings. You know, besides the very first comic that got me into all this, um, that piece where she comes and basically is asking him for forgiveness. And he doesn't even say a word. He just basically that panel where she's sitting on the floor with him and he's hugging her. And the, the way her face was drawn, the look of relief on her face she brought tears to my eyes. And I've never forgotten that moment. And it still still chokes me up to this day. Yeah, it's an emotional comic. It's great. That's for sure. So Miller's run is incredible. I know that from, from Miller, we, we get into Denny O'Neill. Then we go into Ann Nocenti. We talked about those two. What did you think about D.G. Chinchester's run? Well, what run did he do? I'm not sure if I actually read that, buddy. So his stuff came on the tales of Ann Nocenti. And um, he did a lot of really, really cool uh, stuff with the gesture. And, I mean, he, he, again, broke Matt down. This is kind of where you get some of the kingpin, the kingpin getting broke down as well. Okay. And um, to me, his run was just a complete mirror of what Anno Senti was trying to do. And so he just, he, you know, he continued it. So it's not a bad run at all. Mm-hmm. Um you know, probably along the same levels of, of Ando Senti. I don't know if you had read that one or not. No, I never, I never did. Like I read, I read the, the O'Neill stuff mm-hmm. and then I read some of the Nocenti stuff, but I, then I didn't read anything until, you know, when I was a kid and he was the armored <laughs> daredevil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was right before that. Yeah, that was all, that was all right before that. Okay. Good. Stuff. I also remember there was a, a story I read called flying blind. I think it was Scott Lobdell. Oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it was like around like the like ninety seven, ninety eight, or something like that. I think right. I read that stuff too. And, yeah, uh, and being like, eh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so, but you did, uh, you know, at that particular time. I mean, right after you know the armored stuff, you got into the Kevin Smith run, yeah, uh, which was unbelievable. I mean, for him to vie to get Mysterio as the you know his his main villain was to me one of the best plays in comics that's ever been done. I think they were genius in giving it to him. Um, and uh, I mean, still that run with him and Casada, uh, the artwork is incredible. The writing is incredible. Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, I, I can't, it, it, it put Marvel back on the map. Number one. Yeah. Uh, but it led to two, Joe Casada becoming editor in chief. Absolutely. It led to a whole new era. I did, the Marvel night stuff was absolutely fantastic. You know, there was the the misstep with the Punisher run, you know. Yeah, yeah. But all that stuff was amazing. Absolutely. Christopher Priest on Black Pan- uh, Black Panther. Oh, yeah, I Paul love Priest. Jay Lee on Inhumans. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember being so excited for that stuff and that Daredevil. I remember seeing that first image that was the cover of number one oh. of him flying through New York City skyline, you know, and you're looking down at him, and it's Joe Casada, right? Yeah. And oh my goodness, I like loved that run. I I remember that was my first experience with comic books being very late. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, my first time, I'm like, "Where's the next issue?" And they're like, "Yeah, we have no idea when the next issue is coming." Right. And it, it took a long time for those eight issues to come out. For but, sure. Oh my goodness, they were so good. <laughs> and that was the first Daredevil I ever read. And. Kevin Smith has some comic book work that's a little bit questionable. You yeah. know, it's not always the best, nope. I would say. Um, but I, I would say that Daredevil is his best mainstream superhero work for sure. I would agree. Um, that that Guardian Devil story is amazing. I, you know, I, I grew up uh, in the Baptist church. Mm-hmm. So the idea of the Antichrist and Revelation, all that was, that, that's always been in my head this my entire life. And to see that kind of played out in a 
I mean, it was very much, and I grew up loving horror movies as well, right? So like yeah. The Omen and stuff like that. And then at the time, we're, we're heading towards the year 2000. Right. And I know a lot of the younger people today, they don't know what that felt like. No. <laughs> and, and everybody kind of like anticipated something, some kind of big gear shift change to happen. Right. And so you had all these movies like End of Days and The the Last Child, all these things about the Antichrist or the, the, the apocalypse or the revelation. Kevin Smith took his Catholic background and yep. brought that right into this story. And then it was all just a Mysterio story. And I knew who Mysterio was, but I never took him seriously. Right, and that, right. that really, and then he kills himself. <laughs> and I feel like it's a disservice to that story that Mysterio is back alive and well. Of course, he's a movie star now, so he has to be. Right. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> but that that Daredevil run is amazing. And Joe, yeah. that's that's the best Joe Casada artwork. That well, yeah. I think it gets better in the next arc. But, I, I think I think it does too. I really yeah. do. It's uh, so yeah. solid. He 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 found his stride. I'm gonna say hi to some people in the chat here really quick. Uh let's see, we got Steve Ball, he's joined. Of course, Sam from Sam's Tangled Web. How you doing there, Sam? Good to see you. And we got uh, Hermione Reyes Jr. How you doing there, man? Gore Vidal. How you doing there, Gore? Good to see you as always. And uh, Bueller's here, man. How you doing there, Bueller? Good to see you, buddy. What's up, Bueller? Come on, man. Samuel David, how you doing? And we got uh, Robert Galvin, comic book G-Spot. How you doing there, buddy? And uh, let's see, we got um, Padrego is in here. How you doing? Two and of his favorites, he says. Wow. What's that? He says two of his favorites together. Oh, wow. that's awesome. Thanks. Wow. In a world where Bueller exists, to say that we're two of your favorites. Thank you. I so know, much. huh? <laughs> and we got the Comics Club in here as well. Man, you guys, thank you all for, for joining. Uh, it, it's awesome to have you all here. Hey, Bueller's back, and he was like, hey, I'm home now. What did I miss? And we're like, well, you missed nothing. We just recognized that you were even here in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about Frank Miller Daredevil. I mean, that took a long time, but it's so essential to talk about that. Absolutely. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. So um, I know we talked about uh, Kevin Smith's run. You talked about the stuff that Kusada did just after that, and that's when he started um, – him and uh, David uh, Mack started doing some stuff there. Oh, Bueller uh, wants in on the right. show, Bob. I don't mean to interrupt you, but Bueller wants in, he says. Yeah. Oh, he wants in, huh? Yeah, I, I say send him the link. I bet that would I'm, make the people happy. Absolutely. As long as he doesn't derail the show, we're having a really good conversation. I don't want him coming in here like stirring shit up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> here we go. And... We had a good thing going, Bueller, and then you had to derail it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a um, bam. Let's see. Do me a favor and send me your email address really quick, Bueller. Oh man, I thought y'all were homies. You don't even have his email address. I don't Lies. know by heart, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just messing with you, man. <laughs> I don't even know my own phone number by heart, bro. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that's a hard thing to do sometimes. You're you like, know? what's your phone number? I'm like, I have no idea. Exactly. <laughs> Just give me yours. I'll send you a text. <laughs> Real quick then, Bob, while we're doing this, I, this yeah. is not Daredevil related, but I do want to show these off. I had these for there? a while. Oh man, I haven't seen those for a while. Dude, I love starting lineup. When I was a yeah. kid, these were like this was everything. Oh, you got the big three right there, man. Well, uh, both of the, two of them are Emmett. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I don't have an Irwin, but uh, two That's of awesome. them, two of them are Emmett, but the different jersey col covers there you colors. <laughs> Emmett is Emmett is the true goat. Oh yeah, him Aikman. That whole that, that's why I became a Cowboys fan. Yeah. Everybody's always like, you're a Yankees, a Cowboys, and a Lakers fan. I was like, yeah, I like the teams that won when I was a kid in the 90s. <laughs> they were winners, and I, I liked them then. I still like them now. Amen. He just gave his goddamn I'm, – I'm sorry. He just gave his, uh, his email address in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got it. Uh, That's okay, hilarious. I just that to you, buddy. Beeler's going to get bombed uh, with emails Rich now. Spanish just joined. Let's see here. 
make sure that we did not miss anything. <laughs> I want on this show, man. <laughs> I want to make sure we didn't miss any co any comments. Gore says Frank Miller's Dead Orville was the bridge from a typical mainstream comic to artistry, much like Scorsese did with Taxi Driver. Oh, that's a great comment. That is a perfect description of that. That that Ab that's very accurate. Absolutely, it was being done in the independents, but their reach wasn't wide. Oh man, that is. Thank you, Gore. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That was very insightful and profound. I wish Absolutely. I would have thought of I'm, I'm going to steal that now. I'm going to say every time I mention Miller's Daredevil, <laughs> it's, it's akin to Martin Scorsese during the 70s when he was doing Taxi Driver. So good. Uh, let's see, Bueller, did you get that? Well, while you're waiting on him, I think we we're about to talk about the David Mack run. Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the David Mack run is so amazing. Parts of a Hole is one of my absolute favorite Daredevil stories ever. And what is it about Parts of a Hole that really grabbed you, Robbie? What really grabbed me was I really liked the Kevin Smith run. I thought yeah. that was cool. And but I didn't know a lot about what was going on. Like Bullseye was kind of new to me. I didn't know the Karen Page stuff. Um, but it really I it resonated with me because of the the tie-ins to the 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 revelation stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then when parts of a whole started, first of all, that was the first time I had ever seen David Mack's artwork. Yeah. On the covers and then on some of the pages of the issues. Wow. And I fell in love with the character of uh Maya Lopez, Echo. Oh. oh, man. What an amazing character. And I'm so glad that Bendis used her so that more people know her now. You know? Right, right. But David Max, his artwork, his style, that the romance that blossomed, I hadn't at that point read the Frank Miller Electra stuff. Right. I didn't read any of the other stuff with his. He's Matt Murdock is like most of his story is, is really told through his romantic relationships, right? It really is. And I didn't know that at the time. So this was my first introduction into a typical Matt falls in love and it goes tragically bad. Right. <laughs> so, and, and I just, I loved it so much. And when you threw in David Mack's artwork, oh my goodness, that's still one. I think it's artistically. Um, I think it, it pushed Joe Casada to beyond what he was already doing. I don't think he's ever, he's kind of not really been in comics since then, you know, cause he's been, more on the other side of it, being the editor in chief and now CCO. Yeah. Um, and he he's done amazing things for comics since. This is the dude that did Ash. And he's doing this really artistic, like amazing exploration on love and tragedy. And and it's just filled with nuance. Like it just blew me away. Blew me away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, bringing in um a character. Uh, you know, as a love interest who is deaf to his blindness, I thought was genius in itself. I mean, some people could call it trite, but I thought it was genius. And I don't think that it, um, the way Mac did it is, is what made it so good. Um, you know, further on down the line, he does get to do the um, uh, vision quest storyline, which is basically yeah. just echo basically recounting her life and how she got to where she's at and uh the way um he put that into a um kind of a like a collage journal format very visual when i got to that stuff i was so blown away you know i had just gotten back into comics i had missed the whole you know i i missed about a good 15 to 17 years worth of comics i was catching back up and um so I started getting into the Bendis stuff, but when I when I picked that up, I was like, "You, it blew me away." I mean, it's like I, I didn't know you could do this in comics, you know. Yeah, and, and it was just a fill-in story, you it, know, it, in the in between the Bendis run, right? Exactly. And and so I'm, I, you know, I, I I can't praise Mac stuff enough, uh, you know, starting you know with that storyline and then you, you know going further. I wish they would have allowed him to do more. Oh yeah, um, no kidding. I would love to see him come back. Like if, if Sadarsky needs a break, 
bring back David Mack. Please. Uh, just got to um, just got to meet him. Uh, not that. Hold on one second. He's How cool not- of a guy is David Mack? He's super cool, is he not? He's amazing. I met him back in 2002. I got a funny story about that. So I'll tell this real quick while you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. But like I met him in Wizard World in Chicago in like 2002, maybe oh. 2001 or something like that, right? So I go and I meet him and he's a he's you know, he's a young handsome dude at this time, right? He still is to be honest with you. But he's <laughs> he was this young handsome dude. I met him. I got him to sign something. It was super cool. Um that was awesome. So I was I went back and I met up with my homies. Jelani, for instance, was there, one of our homies at PCP. And there's Bueller. Hey, buddy. And uh, hey, look at all those amazing fantasy 15s he has. Um, but uh, so I went, I was like, hey, man, you got to meet David Mack. David Mack is the coolest cat. And so I took him back there. And this dude is at his booth with an acoustic guitar. Just storytelling like song singer songwriting type stuff and he's got he's got uh, like a bunch of women just sitting in an arc around his booth just hanging on every word and jelani was like you're right he is cool (laughs) (laughs) i've never seen that at a con ever like i go to see this guy he's just doing the typical hey he's there he's signing books he's saying what's up then you come back and he's just playing acoustic guitar and he's just got a bunch of adoring fans just like Oh, David. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So we sat down and joined them and, you know, Googled over him as well. (laughs) (laughs) He's a very good looking guy. Probably the best looking daredevil creator of all time is David. (laughs) There you go. There you go. Uh, He's he's an amazing dude, man. It was really, really cool to meet him. Um, Bueller and I uh, were just over at TFA not that long ago. I I was glad I had Bueller with me because I probably wouldn't have made it that day. But... (laughs) Yeah, but we you did. Gotta go, that. You gotta go to the right store that he's at. Yeah, exactly. And uh, but that was that was the actually the second time that, that I met him. And uh, you know, dude's a government dude, man. He works for the State Department. That blew me away. I didn't know that. Yeah, is he is he Bendis's source for his early work when he did like Fire, for instance, which is a big like CIA type book? I bet. Thinking, <laughs> I bet he was. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Because you know he does he does some high level government work you know when he's not doing comics so I did not know that yeah that's yeah. why if the cover makes so much more sense now right he's exactly a, he's, right. A spy. he's a spy he's literally wow. like a, a a known spy and instead of being a spy who's undercover he's overcover and he's a spy <laughs> it's like confessions of a dangerous mind but like and the com- that's what cover was that makes so much yeah, more sense wow that's him that's cool <laughs> wow. Very How does cool he get stuff. away with that? Why have they not sent like a, a drone after him yet? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, right? <laughs> wow. What's up, good Bueller? Stuff. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, Robbie. Nice uh, to have you on here with, with Bob. Two of my favorites right here. Bob is one of my favorites for sure. You both oh, are. Man. I Thank love you. Stuff. Hey, let me, let me ask you guys this. You ever been in a room with a bunch of comic store owners and have the news drop that DC fires D- Dan Dido? The no, I wanted to Dido? ask if, if he was there. <laughs> uh, no, he was not there. Yes, but not. DC, was, DC was there, and they were doing a presentation right after that news dropped. Wow. And, so and that, wasn't, gonna, that wasn't dropped by them. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Yeah, no. Wow. wow. Yeah. I don't know if they knew, the people that were there. But uh, we're sitting at a table with all these comic shop owners, and they're looking at their phones like, oh, my God. And they see that, and uh, it was just kind of a – it was weird to see because everyone that's kind of what the topic was, you know, and they were all the, for, for the most part, they're all at the about time. They're, they're, they are not fans of that guy. Well, there are a lot of people that are not fans of him that I don't think understand the nuance of the comic book industry. Yeah. 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 Well, these were comic shop owners. I get that. Yeah. Like I you, work, I you, work for you, a, you, I'm you not work a comic, comic shop. shop. Yeah. I work for a comic shop owner, yeah. but as much you know, as much complaints as there there are against Dan, like he's responsible for some big resurgences in DC. Yeah, absolutely, he's responsible for a lot of stuff. If you like Scott Snyder on Batman, that's Dan mm-hmm. Didio. If you like yeah. Grant Morrison being writing, like if you like Grant Morrison writing DC comics, which I do, that's Dan. If you you know, if you like Infinite Crisis, that's Dan. If, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that he's responsible for. Um, I think that DC is just. 
I think Dan is the scapegoat. You know, do you think, yeah, I don't think they're going to fire Jim. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They're not going to do that. Um, they're not happy with Jeff Johns. They haven't been for a while. Yeah. They, you know, if you, by the way, you like DC Black Label? That's Dan. That's, That's him. Right. That's his thing. So I, I don't know. I, I really, I really, really like him at DC, but I'm not against a change because he's sure. been there for a while. So. So the news true. article that I read didn't say that he was fired. It said that he stepped down. Oh, he was yeah. fired. Yeah, like, he was fired. You know, they, was I fired. think it's a, a step down is a polite way of saying that you're gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it was it's, fired. It's unfortunate because you know, with with all the things that have been going on with DC, um, I think they're the company that I'm most worried about and have been for a while. Um, yeah, you, you, that's because you listen to Rob Liefeld. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about no. DC. DC and Marvel are fine. They're all, yeah. Disney, Warner Brothers. They're cool. I just Dan did, Dan was very passionate about comic books. Yeah, he was very enthusiastic about it. And sometimes, as far as publishers go, you don't get people that really necessarily like comic books right. in those positions. So it was very beneficial to have him in that position for the time that he was. He's done great work, and and I know a lot of people have their opinions, but in all of this, I don't want it to be forgotten what he did. He was amazing for DC. Yeah, um, yeah. He had some missteps. We all do. We all um, do. But I mean, Jim Shooter didn't do everything right at Marvel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but like he's remembered as being a very important, influential figure. We were talking about Joe, Joe Casada. Mm -hmm. Not every decision he made panned out. Nope. You know, the fact that he kept giving jobs to Ron Zimmerson was terrible because the guy could not write a comic book to save his life. <laughs> but great point. It happens, you know, and yeah. with the wins come the bad. And I think overall, Dan did did more good stuff. But now it really leads me to go, what's going on with 5G? Because that was his baby. I heard, see canceled, I, heard that canceled. I heard they canceled it. That's kind of what I'm what I was hearing. Today. But they've already they've already announced the free comic book day issue. That's already yeah. printed like. What's yeah. like, I don't, it's going to be weird. <laughs> it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird. But you know, you know, but before, before we move on, if, if you ever get a chance, if you really want to know or get to know who Dan DiDio is and his love for comics and not look at him as, you know, the CEO of, of DC, um, there's a great podcast that should still be out there uh, on Kevin Smith's show, Fat Man on Batman. It's an hour long, just interview between him, him and Kevin, uh, basically at Kevin Smith's house. And they just go deep diving on Batman, their love of comic books, and you know he's a he's a, he's an awesome dude. And so I'm I'm really sad that he stepped down. Yeah, that he got fired. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there's been a lot of changes at DC for a while, but I think the biggest problem at DC over the last few years has been Bob Harris, not Dan. Interesting. So I think Bob Harris is the problem, and and he's the editor in chief. You know, and he was the editor in chief at Marvel when Marvel went bankrupt. <laughs> so That's yeah, why point. is he why is he got a job? <laughs> if right, DC's right. restructuring, why is he still there? Yeah. Well, that's that or that there's a good point. Uh, somebody in the chat just said Bendis got him fired. I wanted to <laughs> Are you talking about got, got the Dio fired? Or are you talking about Harris fired? Well, the Dio is the one that got before. Bendis over there. That's yeah. why Bendis isn't at Comic Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Bendis isn't at Comic Pro. <laughs> so so I know we, we've pretty much gone, you know, over, you know, I think what we were trying to do. Um, did you have anything, any other Daredevil runs you wanted to go over, Robbie? Well, Brian Michael Bendis. Yeah. Everybody wants to talk smack about his Superman run, and that's fine because it's valid. But his Daredevil run was amazing. You, you can't. And you can't. It made that. me want to read Miller's Daredevil run. Uh, Brew Baker right after him. That was an amazing run. Absolutely. Uh, you were talking earlier about Mark Wade's run. I love that run. It took it yeah. back to the Silver Age. Yeah. It made Matt a fun, vibrant character again. Mm -hmm. um, you can only handle the the doom and gloom, Catholic guilt thing for so long. Right. And you got to bounce back. It's got to be a, like a pendulum, right? It has to. It has to. And, I, I, and right I now, Zdarsky. Oh, man. I, I just I love what Zdarsky's doing. I mean, yeah. the, the last few issues, I, I mean... <laughs> It, 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 the the newest book is almost my pick of the week. I'll, I'll get into that in, in this weekend. But loving Zdarsky's run. Uh, uh, an image came out today of the new annual that's coming out, um, where it shows basically uh, Matt in the red Daredevil suit, but he's got the yellow boxing robe. 
uh, on of his dad, man. And I just love that cover. And Zdarsky actually uh, uh, did the artwork on that. Zdarsky, by the way, had one of my favorite tweets today from a comics professional about the Dan DiDio firing. Oh, he yeah. said, man, Dan was a big fan of me being at Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, Bendis's run, is, it was incredible. Um, I loved uh, how vulnerable he made the Kingpin. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I don't think anybody has ever, um, you know, took, you know, taking it to the kingpin like, like he got taken into in, in that, in that run. Uh, he basically got shanked American me style, uh, you know, and, and taken down. And uh, it was just a really, and then being blind. I think it was just amazing, uh, you know, what, what, what Bendis did with a lot of the, a lot of the characters inside of that run. Um, I do love Brubaker's run. I think some of the best Mr. Fear and, uh, one of my personal favorite uh, bullseye moments is inside of uh, inside of his run. Uh, I love the the whole you know he's inside a prison and he can hear the cacophony of all the prisoners and then all of a sudden this hush comes over the whole prison and uh, that's a great moment. Matt says he's here. <laughs> I love his use of Dakota. That's really cool too. Oh yes, absolutely. Michael Lark's artwork artwork is amazing. Yeah, that's a great I run. Michael Lark is a pretty, pretty uh, cool dude too, man. I got to sat and talk with him for about an hour at Rose City Comic Con. Super uh, jealous. Dude, <laughs> that, his run on Daredevil and then Gotham Central. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Super yeah. jealous. That's awesome. Yeah. He's a re real political dude too, man. He's uh, not, not so uh -oh. at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, no, I mean, there, there's just so many good runs on Daredevil and you know, it's my, it's my, all time favorite character. And, and, uh, I, you know, I mean, I, I can't say enough about him. Um, Bob, I mean, before we get to the next bit, I have to pee real quick. If you don't mind, not a problem. <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to pick Bueller's brain here for a second. While you Please do. do. <laughs> I want to know how he got so many first appearances of Spider-Man's. Yeah, I know. Huh? <laughs> They're only a dollar a piece. There you go. So a piece. How was it there today, man? Oh man. It was it, awesome day today. Yeah. Just, uh, I mean, I literally talked with a couple hundred comic shop owners. Wow. And, uh, you know, just all over the United, all over the world. I mean, there's people, there's comic shop owners there from like London and uh, really uh, New Zealand and everything. So I got to sit down and talk with them. And uh, and obviously I was pitching the, the Max Pro supplies, but uh, I got a lot of chance to go around and speak with other publishers that were there. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me just tell you this now: the Bueller code works on Max Pro Supplies for ten percent mm -hmm. off. It's going to be working on other places as well. Really? Coming up very soon. So I'm very excited to get that ball rolling. Publishers. So uh, I'm excited about that. I was pretty happy, you know, getting the opportunity. And and if people don't know what I'm talking about, there's a it's called Comics Pro. It's an event for like an industry uh like comic shop owners and publishers and products we do it once a year and because of my ties with the max pro supply guys um i get to go to that event and it's this weekend i still have tomorrow and uh it's a yeah, it's a, basically a convention for comic shop people right and uh i got this i didn't i don't know if i mentioned it yesterday but i'll go ahead and mention it now because i really don't care but <laughs> but uh <laughs> Uh, I, David Gabriel from Marvel, uh, he's one of the heads of Marvel comics and stuff. Um, basically had breakfast with him today and oh, that's uh, awesome, bro. hung out with him and, uh, talk, talk Marvel, talked other stuff, you know, as far as the channel and maybe doing something together with Marvel and everything. And, uh, so it was, it was a really good thing. Kind of the, the, the seeds were planted yesterday, and then the, the full plant was grown today. It's Oregon, so plants grow really fast. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, uh, Scout Comics, Aftershock Comics, um, the, 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 the ball's rolling. So it's uh, it's interesting. And it's, I'm very happy I got a chance to go and do this event and meet some of your guys' local comic shops because I was like – I would sit there and say, hey, I'm Bueller. I'm sure you have a customer, and the, sure enough, it – they have a customer that watches my videos and you know, the conversation starts up and everything. And it was, it was a lot of fun. So looking yeah. forward to it tomorrow and talking with more people, man. Well, so I got two things. First of all, super jealous. 
I mean, <laughs> for you to be in front of all those people, man, that's just that's just amazing. But second of all, congratulations, man. I'm very happy for you. Um, I think it's just awesome that you know you've been able to get in front of who you should be in front of, uh, especially you know with with the show that you have and how how much it's used. I think it could be used you know to greater effect. And then not only that, but to all, you know already have you know other companies that want to partner with you. Uh, that is fantastic, bro. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm excited. You know, it's, uh, I'm excited. Let's just say that, you know, I don't, I, all the details will have to get worked out, but it's just, you know, it's kind of been building to this point for a while mm -hmm. and, uh, I get the opportunity to do some things with some, you know, publishers and other people and creators and, and, uh, um, there, there's going to be special, uh, episodes of the coffee and comic show. Sorry, Bob, you're probably not going to be on it, but there, the, the regular Monday show will be there, but mm -hmm. there might be a couple special ones later in the week with a special guest. Sure. And, uh, uh, I can't really say who that who they are right now, but you'll know them when you see them. Right so, on. Uh, it's very cool. It's it's been a great start to the weekend so far, so I can't complain. That's awesome, bro. Yeah. yeah, and and you know, don't don't worry about me getting jealous in that area, man. You you I mean whatever, Bob. You're my you're my number one coffee, bro. <laughs> I could get coffee with you any day of the week, bro. That's right. <laughs> so, but that's awesome stuff, man. That, that's that's so that's so cool to hear. And uh, I mean, I knew I knew it was going to be a, a you know a pretty awesome event. And uh, so, that's awesome, man. I mean, getting a chance to talk with David Gabriel from Marvel, mm -hmm. you know, a, a couple times at length, private type of stuff. Because I mean, it's I literally walk into a room and he's there by himself. Like what's going on, David? And we're we're just sitting there talking, That's you know, crazy for a big period of time about stuff, and uh, and it's like right after the DC news dropped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was an interesting conversation. That's like yeah. talking to the wizard behind the curtain, man. Yeah, you know, such good stuff. And I was thinking to myself, I wonder what Robbie's reading right now, because all that guy does is read comic books. I was reading Jack Kirby, Stanley, Fantastic Four today. Were well, you really? Yeah, I read issue number four. The uh, oh, first yeah. the reappearance of the Submariner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm always reading Fantastic Four. Yeah, always. Fantastic Four is a great book. Now, yeah. there's some Fantastic Four I need to catch up on because I saw a post by you today talking about your Doctor Doom moments. Yeah. There, there was some stuff that you put, you put there that I know that I have not read yet. So You, you haven't have read the Hickman stuff? I have not read the Hickman stuff. Oh, you've messed some of the best Doom moments ever. Really? Yes. So, so, so yes, I've got me. I've got ten Doom moments listed. Oh, come on, sock it to me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite Doctor Doom moments in comic books. Come on, man. All right. So first of all, let, uh, give a big shout out to Mark Wade's run, the Unthinkable Arc, where he he goes and he makes that sacrifice of his first love, and he takes her skin and create creates new armor with it. <laughs> like how creepy was that, right? Did you ever read that, anybody? No, no, no. Oh my goodness! So, so that's so like Valeria skin and made armor with it. Yes, what? and it's it's like around issue number five hundred, right? There's even a cool like foil chromium director's cut edition of issue number five hundred. Mm -hmm. um, I have it, of course. I'm a big Fantastic Four guy. The yeah, way yeah. you are, Bob, to Daredevil, I am to Fantastic Four. Sweet. And by association, Doctor Doom, who's probably my favorite fictional character ever. Come on. It's like Doctor Doom and it's in Dracula. <laughs> That's They're awesome. They're like the best. But that run is amazing. And the Doctor Doom stuff is amazing too. And that's where it was after Valeria had been born, the you know, the, the Richards kid. And uh he made her like his familiar. The first word she ever speaks is Doom. That's why they have this amazing relationship. Um, I got a few, so I'll go through them real quick. Speaking of Valeria, he was the reason why Valeria was born. So there's a moment in the uh, it's between the Jeff Loeb, Carlos Pacheco run and the Wade run. Mm -hmm. And Carl Kiesel came in with uh, Mark Bagley. They did a brief run. And during the Jeff Loeb run, man, this is too much. But during the Jeff Loeb run, um, Franklin, using his powers, had re-impregnated Susan with the child that she lost during the John Byrne run. OK, what? and that that's Valeria. Right. Wow. So. Reed couldn't save Valeria at the time in the eighties, right? During the John Byrne run, it's a really famous story. Right. Um, it's a great issue of fantastic four. Um, I, read, I read all the Byrne stuff. 
Yeah. Right. So like, you know what I'm talking about. Right. And so he gets, she, Susan gets reimpregnated with Val and the same dangers are there. So Reed cannot save her. So they have to get Victor to save her. So right. Victor comes and he does this like magical spell type thing. And he is able to birth her. And he's like, the only thing I ask is that I get to name her. And he named right. her Valeria. That's why her name is Val. And that's why she calls him uncle doom because he's basically her godfather. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Really good stuff. And in the, uh, the, the Wade run, the unthinkable arc, they really get back to the idea that doom is not just a, a mad scientist. He's a sorcerer as yeah. well, you know, and that's very early. Like that's from the very first appearance. So, which is right there, by the way, there we go. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so I've read that a few times. Um, there's a run by Chuck Dixon and Leonardo Manco right after uh, Heroes Reborn. All mm -hmm. the heroes came back from the Jim Lee Liefeld universe, right? Mm -hmm. And Doom kind of stayed behind. And what happened is he wound up on Counter Earth with no armor. He kills a lion, puts the lion's skin on him, and he takes over the world. He goes from there to taking over the world. Like, that's just Victor. That's Victor. That's just what he does, you know? <laughs> um, the Triumph and Torment. The, oh, the Roger Stern, Mike that. Mignola. No. But yeah, that Doctor Strange story, that's amazing. Um, his it, first it, appearance is a great issue. He's trying to get Blackbeard's treasure. He right. Wants the, you know, and Thing winds up becoming Blackbeard, and it's just a great issue. The Secret Wars by Jonathan Hickman, which is the the culmination of, of Hickman's run on Fantastic Four. Mm. So leading up to that, in a book called FF, there's a moment where Doom actually joins up with Richards and the rest, right? Mm -hmm. and he becomes part of the future foundation. So he's, that's why he's wearing white in that image that you saw. Right. Mm -hmm. And they have this, there's they're faced with utter destruction and catastrophe. And they have to, they have to hold off the celestials for just a little bit. They just need like a little bit of a window of time, but against the celestials, that's, that's impossible. Who's going to be able to do that. Right. Victor. Victor can do it. So Victor holds off the Celestials. And that's the moment that you saw that I posted in the PCP army. And I want to, I just want to read this. Sure. The, the, the dialogue that he says as utter gods are coming towards him to kill him. He says, I am a foolish, prideful man. Perhaps this is the day I pay too high a price for it, but no, I am doom the damned. <laughs> <laughs> Do your worst. I will remain unmoved. That's Victor 100%. 100%. That's him. But Love my it. absolute favorite Dr. Doom moment, which is probably my favorite comic book moment, is when he first steals the Silver Surfer's powers. Yes. In that issue 57. <laughs> that the, the image of him on the surf on the surfboard, just like mad with power, just like, Rah! that's like my favorite comic book moment is Jack Kirby. Is Stan Lee. It's golden. It works so well. Those are my, I know it's a lot, but yeah, those, those, I mean, Victor's just the best. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. I probably um, relate to him more than I should. Yeah. But Victor's the best. <laughs> and, and, and I'm, I'm in the same boat. I mean, you know, I, I, I related to him, you know, from the very beginning, especially when I got into, oh, where'd Bueller go? All right. I'm still here. Okay. He may I'm just still stepped here. out. Okay, not a problem. So it basically, um, you know, I, I I loved the costume. I loved, uh, you know, the the, uh, the way he, he treated everybody. You know, insolent fools. <laughs> I love oh. everybody calls somebody a fool. Um, One of my favorite things is is the his use of the, of ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> his um, obsession with Richards, right? Curse you, Richards. Yeah, but yeah. you know. Uh, in, in, inside of, I think where I really caught on to loving Doom as much as I did um, was when I saw the whole understanding of him going to the depths of hell to save his mother. And, you know, um, losing my mother the way that I did, I understood the character to the core because I would have done anything. And so uh, having that dynamic in play. And then the other thing you know, understanding there was a, I can't remember the name. It was either tales to astonish or astonishing tales. Um, but there was only like the first few issues that were all 
uh, you know, like double issues. I think it was Kazar, and then you'd have Doctor Doom. You know, double double, double stories. But the, the last issue of of the Doom run has the uh, was the first time I ever caught on to the fact that Doom once a year, every year, basically challenges Satan himself into a duel for his mother's soul, and it's like if you can go challenge Satan himself. Who else can come against you? Right? Yeah, right. So his arrogance, you know, is well founded, and I, I've always loved that. Um, but he's that, a foolish, prideful man. Exactly. <laughs> but the thing about you know that that um, that moment inside of that book, understanding that he did that every year, wasn't that part of it. The part that got me was there's some imagery inside of that book. I can't remember who drew it, uh, but there's some imagery inside of that book. It might have even been Gene Colan. Anyway, there's some imagery inside that book where before you even get to the battle, uh, you're you're seeing the Latvian peasants and they know what's going on. They know that once a year he goes and battles and they're, you're seeing the castle in the background and you see nothing but magic flowing from it as he's battling inside of there. And you know this huge epic battle is going on and they're horrified and concerned for their ruler. And I just, just the, the, the lead up to that, was one of my favorite Doom. Like you don't even see him, and you know that he's just kicking ass inside of there. <laughs> Always love that. And then um, Iron Man 150, when we got you know Doom Quest, uh, yeah, one of my man. favorite uh, all-time comic book stories. Um, one of the things that got me about that story that I love at the very end is when they finally lay down, him and Iron Man lay down just to work together. And that's one of the places where thought bubbles actually worked because the admiration for each other that was going on behind the scenes was just as cool as them working together to make that makeshift time machine. Yeah. Cool moment in comics. And um, so I like the revisit to that too, that they did like a hundred issues later or mm -hmm. whatever, like in two fifty or whatever that like doom and Iron Man have a really great relationship. They, you do, know? they do. Absolutely. Uh, I even love the, the, the what if that they revisited with that as well. Yes. <laughs> um I, did, you know you, you're you, dr doom bob that's why i wanted to do this show with you yes absolutely come on um did you ever read uh books of doom yes yeah so uh i i love the retcon um you know inside of there you know showing um the uh you know not only um uh how can i put this because it's been a while since i read it but uh, I, I loved how they showed his origin growing up, showing how his dad died as well as his mother yeah. and bringing it all you know, to the, to the forefront on how he became ruler of Latveria. Um, yeah. And, but I, but I didn't like the retcon where the battle that he has every year, every time he loses, the people would revile him more. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I, I well, wasn't, wasn't too cool with that, but. Well, if you're going to go against Satan, you got to have some some kind of a sacrifice, right? right? right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I got it. I got it. But I, I think I think that was that, Ed Brubaker that did Brubaker, all that, right? Brubaker, exactly. Yeah. And so, man, I, yeah, I, I love Doctor. Any any chance I can get Doctor Doom, he's my he's he's my dude. I mean, Doom's my hero. He's <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So, Bueller, you got any Doom moments, man? You like Doctor Doom? I played so much Doom on my PC. <laughs> I loved it. Oh, you mean with The Rock? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the better movie. The movie was better than the comic. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a Doom fan, but I, I'm nowhere near as far as uh, knowledgeable as both of you. So just hearing you guys talk about it makes me want to go read some more about Doom, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Um, the, obviously, the one that I that draws me in is Secret Wars uh, with Doctor Doom. Just his the role in the was was really good, and and it's been a long time since I've read that book, and it makes me want to go back and read that se the first Secret Wars. Yeah, the first one. Okay. Yeah, makes me want to go back and reread it and everything. You know, that was That's really cool. The introduction to Doctor Doom was probably that that limited series. The uh, the cool thing about that Secret Wars run is that it really spotlighted doom and yeah. Yeah. and what I've loved about Dr. Doom and probably why I love him so much is that even when Marvel started as Marvel in the sixties, it was fantastic Four and Spider-Man that right. made that company. Right. 
And then it morphed into Spider-Man and X-Men. And it's yep. kind of been like that ever since. And now the Avengers, of course. But even when the Fantastic Four weren't the most popular, Doctor Doom was. And because Doctor yeah. Doom was popular, people knew who the Fantastic Four were. And Absolutely. yeah, and that that Secret Wars run that really spotlighted Victor, that was amazing. I mean, he steals the Beyonder's power. Right. That was that, one of the moments. <laughs> that's what Doom does. Yeah. You know, he steals somebody else's powers. Another one I forgot to mention actually was the um uh, it's during the uh, Tom DeFalco Paul Ryan run. It's a, it's three it's 365. Mm -hmm. It was like a foil cover, if anybody remembers. But Doom steals Aaron the the Watcher. He steals his power, so he steals the power of a Watcher, and he <laughs> he gets like spikes on his armor and all that stuff. Like that's what Doom does. He did that in with Silver Surfer. He does it with the Beyonder, and yeah. then in Hickman's Silver uh, Secret Wars run, he does it again. He steals the power of all the Beyonders. He remakes the Marvel universe. He keeps it alive. Like he is the ultimate. What I love, this is probably, I guess the best doom moment is that he is actually the savior of the Marvel universe. Absolutely. Exactly. Now that I knew <laughs> it would have gone away without him. It would have all died. <laughs> so, so he, here's a question for you. Why do you think that they, <laughs> I mean, maybe this isn't even a valid question. What the hell are they doing with our character right now, man? <laughs> are you talking about the solo title? Yes. Oh, I hate that run. Oh. I remember when we were doing, uh, Bueller, when we were doing those shows with Jim Mint. Yeah. And he was like, I like Dr. Doom. Yeah. I'm like, really? Do you? Yeah. Really? And then like one of his last videos, he was like, I get it now. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is, It's not good, is it? I was like, yeah. no. I haven't really liked the direction of Victor since uh his iron man stint right yeah i didn't mind the idea that after secret wars like reed fixes his face so now he's like basically reed does that because he's like this is what you blame everything on the right. moment you lost your face by the way by choice dr doom did that right he had like right. one scar that was confirmed by secret wars he had one scar right and he's the one that burned his face by putting that that mask on right yeah <clears throat> was excuse me that's one of my favorite things about doom too is that he's very self-destructive <laughs> and most of his problems come from himself and i think that's very relatable yeah um i think we all kind of deal with that like most of our own problems come from ourselves um but like reads like this is your your excuse so now what would you do and so I like the idea that he tries to be a hero and he does it well and i actually like how bendis and malieve ended that run the way the run ended was he saved the world. But in the process, he got messed up again. Right, right. And nobody knew about it. Right. And it was like, that was almost him in a very self-destructive, self-loathing way. Because Victor is the most self-loathing comic book character that I know of. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he, he doesn't let people know what he did. He doesn't let them know that he saved the world and sacrificed to him his own self again. But he just kind of like meanders and, and hides away again, you know? And right. I think that's very true to the character. Um, Victor is a character that wants respect and recognition, but he doesn't feel like he deserves it. So he does whatever he can to, to, to fight against that. And that's why right. he does the thing he does. Because Doom is one of those characters, much like Magneto, where, and even if you're of the right philosophy, Apocalypse or Ra's al Ghul, the the ends justify the means right to a way and and doom is a very noble character um but everything bad about him as far as being villainous towards the rest of the marvel universe is all a result of his self-loathing destructive behavior towards yeah. himself yeah absolutely that that was the that was the retcon i was talking about inside of um the uh, books of doom yeah. uh, in the original run um when you had reed richards and 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 victor von doom going to school uh and there's this miscalculation and mistake and the big explosion and of course you know that leads to reed richards being uh you know looked at as you know the golden child and doom not and that's when his hatred for reed really you know really got but i love the retcon that he did not make a mistake 
right? The, what happened is, is yeah. the, the duel between him and, you know, the dark forces holding his mom, he miscalculated that and he was not ready for it. And that's what happened to him. And because Reed was looking at his calculations, he blamed him for that. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that was a much better way of looking at it because I don't think he would have made a mistake and made himself lesser than Reed in any way, shape or form. Yeah. And, and a good thing about doom is a great hero needs a good villain, right? Well, yeah. a great villain needs a great hero. And, yeah. and that's Reed Richards. That's Mr. Fantastic. For and, sure. and what's cool is that doom, as we were talking about how it has, has this noble goal, right? Reed is kind of almost at times an inversion of Victor. Yeah. So that Reed, Reed is probably as arrogant, if not more than Victor is. Right. He really is. And his arrogance led to Ben Grimm's disfiguration. Now that's been changed by the point of origin story that Dan Slott's done and whatever, but Reed's responsible. Reed feels guilty for what happened to Ben. Right. right. And that's something Mark Wade points out in his run is that he actually has turned the fantastic four into this, this superhero team that sells comic books and movies and and cartoons and 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 all kinds of merchandise because he wants he knows that he turned his best friend into a freak right, right. and so he wants to kind of make it as easy of a burden as possible reed and doom are the two sides of the exact same coin yeah yeah and that's why it works so well so and, well yeah don't don't ever think that reed like it's very obvious in the new issue of uh x-men fantastic four reed is not necessarily, I mean, he's a good person. He's right? a good person, right? I would say Victor's a good person, to be mm -hmm. honest. I mean, I mean, to be, I mean, when you really get to the the soul of the creature, absolutely. I think like their actions kind of maybe defy some of this, but I think they're both kind of good people, right? Right. But they both have they both have well intentions, but you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, yeah, I was just right? Say the same thing, oh, yeah. <laughs> So, but Reed is just as arrogant and just as uh, assured, uh, like assured of himself as Victor is. And that's Absolutely. why they work so well. That's why Luther and Superman works. That's why the Joker and Batman works. Um, that's why Magneto and Xavier work. It's because right. they're both the exact same coin, just opposite sides. Opposite mm -hmm. sides. That's a great way to put it. That's good stuff. Well, it's obvious we have a deep love for Doom. And uh, I, I, I just uh, appreciate being able to talk to you about this so much um, because it, I, I haven't found too many like hardcore Dr. Doom fans out there. And so good on you, man. Uh, Dr. Doom and the Cowboys. Come on. <laughs> you guys just like those characters with the two D names. That's Daredevil, right. Dr. Right. Doom. Come uh, on. I yeah. like double D's, but a whole other category. See, when Bob <laughs> when Bob said we're going to call this the Great Double D discussion, I was like, people are going to think that's something <laughs> else. Yeah, that's why I showed up. That's why I wanted on there. You know, they're talking about Daredevil. I thought, we oh, were that's like, terrible. Come yeah, on, I, guys. I can play around with words too. Yeah, and, and but my buddy Sam, Sam, I know you're hardcore on Doom too, brother. Come on, man. <laughs> I remember reading a letters page in the '90s in which someone was talking about Dr. Doom mm. and they, they referenced him, a fan did as DD and the editor who it was Tom DeFalco's run. And he was the editor at the time, the editor in chief. Right. Mm. And, and I love that Tom DeFalco, Paul Ryan run. That's where he steals the power of, of the watcher. Doom does. Right. Right. Not, not you ought to, but, uh, uh, Aaron, the rogue. Aaron the but rogue. anyway, yeah, that was good stuff. He really effed up the fantastic four, by the way. And then the very next issue is when Franklin came back as a teenager, mm -hmm. as Psy Lord, which now Valiant has a title called Psy Lords. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. interesting. But no Franklin Richards. Anyway, um, what was I even saying? I don't even This is what happens to me. Uh, just, you're I, just I, talking yeah. about the uh, like news, new newsletter page? Oh, yeah. So this person like was talking about Dr. Doom, and they mentioned him as D.D. Yeah. And Tom, Tom DeFalco or whoever, the, it's, it's, surely it was the assistant editor but uh they were like yo 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 we only refer to daredevil as dd we do not call doc doom daredevil like dd we do we don't we don't do that and ever <laughs> since then i was like well you don't call dr doom dd because that's daredevil right yeah. 
So all I know, but nobody make that mistake out here. <laughs> Marvel does not like Doctor Doom being called DD because that's Daredevil. <laughs> that's too funny. Come on. <clears throat> so what do you think is next? Next for the character? I mean, that last page in the last book, I got me a little hopeful, but I don't know, man. Do you think they'll be able to write the ship on it? Of the Doctor Doom run? Yeah. I think Christopher Cantwell is a really good writer. He writes a book at Dark Horse right now called Everything that is just everything. It's amazing. I pick, I picked that up because of you. I just got the first three issues. I mean, it's weird and surreal, Bueller. Like it's you got to invest in it, but like okay. it's it's surreal. It's really. Yeah. Have you ever read Ice Cream Man at all? Uh, no, I I missed the boat on that one, man. It's it's a lot of times when I'm when I miss it and they're like ten or you know, 15 issues in, I yeah. tend to just kind of skip it until well, I can get a there, run. There's this new thing called a trade paperback, Bueller. You should check it out. <laughs> Dude, I do a video now that shows trade paperback. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, it's a very surreal book. It's really cool. So Christopher Cantwell is a, is a talented writer, but <laughs> this version of, I do not like, like, and, when Dr. Doom was Iron Man, this is why I even started even talking about that was when Bendis was doing that Dr. Doom was Iron Man run. There's a moment where he's sitting, he's just leaning in the corner, like being sarcastic and snotty and eating potato chips. And I'm like, Dr. Doom wouldn't eat potato chips. <laughs> like, like it bothered me. You know, like I'm always telling people on my channel, like, you know, don't hold on to your expectations. Just let the flow go. And if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. If you don't just leave it alone. Right. Dr. Doom would not eat potato chips. No, he wouldn't. He would not eat potato chips. And in this run, he's wearing a hoodie, eating street tacos. And as much as I love street tacos, trust me, right. Vic, that's not Victor's palate. No. <laughs> Victor wants some roasted goat and some nice ale, <laughs> you know, some roasted vegetables. Victor's probably like really on his macros. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He's probably paying attention to that. So like... <laughs> He's not eating potato chips, but That's I just great. don't like this run. Like the whole, the relationship with Morgan Le Fay has any editor at Marvel read that stuff. Do they know what the history is? Right, she's exactly. not going to, she's not going to like save him and like give him no. a safe house and tacos. That's, that's not what she's going to like kill him. She's right. like, you just dare to show your face again after you stole magic from me. Like, Come on, man! Uh, and and the uh, and and the whole thing with with King, the first two issues, that was kind of kind of fun. But what what is that even happening for? I mean, it's like it's got no point to it whatsoever, and it, it got yeah. old really quick. I I don't think Christopher understands the history of Victor and Kang, and I don't think an edit the editor of that book. I don't know who it is, but I don't think they've ever read a Doctor Doom book in their life. I would to be agree. honest with you. I would agree. They may have heard some stuff. They may have bought a toy. <laughs> but, you know they haven't it seems to me like they haven't read like if anybody needs to edit a dr doom book i'm available <laughs> i'll do it i'll do it i'll make i'll write it i don't care i don't i don't even have to write it. i'll give the credit to someone else i'll be a stan lee i'll get i'm like no i'll be the opposite of a stan lee my bad um no like i don't like if, if they need an editor on dr doom like i'm available you know i'm I sure agree. i'm sure i could do a I'm sure I can remember the character's history. He wouldn't eat potato chips. He wouldn't eat street. He doesn't, he's not got a cool relationship with Morgan Le Fay. No. You know? <laughs> that's a, that's not a good relationship there. Like he wouldn't go to her for comfort. Right. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. He, he'd go to like, who would he, I don't know what he would do in and America. He he's burned all bridges. Comfort. He wouldn't go to anybody for comfort. He, you know he'd that? call Christoph to be honest with you. Yeah, probably. probably. But I mean, you know, in that, that that story I was talking about, that first time that they showed in that ast astonishing tales where he has that big battle. When the battle is over with and he's lost, when he comes out, he is so exhausted that one of his, his main servant, he falls into his arms, and the, the servant thinks he needs comfort, and so he puts his arms around him and he basically says, "I'm I'm here for you, you know, master." And then he basically pushes him off and says, I need no one. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's not going to have anybody comfort him. He's self-sufficient and, and he just wouldn't go there. Is that the, the, the burn run that we're talking about where he's like, 
where like uh Christoph says like or oh no you're thinking of, yeah you're right there's that's something completely different but another great moment is that in the burn run it's the, I think it's 246 it's the issue where it's like doom ripping through the page right oh yeah it's I remember John that. Byrne mm -hmm. and Christoph is still young right and Christoph comes up to him and he's like what about Magneto Magneto could help you take over the world I hear his power rivals even yours and Doom snatches this kid up, and they would not get away with this today. But Doom <laughs> s straight up snatches this like ten-year-old kid up by his throat. It's like Doom rivals no one, and just screams at him and berates him. And I'm like, whoa, Doom's pretty hardcore, man. Yeah, he is, man. That's good. Yeah, stuff. he is. Good stuff. Yes. Well, I don't need to read the Hickman stuff. The Hickman stuff is amazing. It, that's, that's really good. That's on my list next. I definitely, I mean, I have the Marvel Unlimited app, but I don't actually have the books. So I'm definitely going to be checking that out. There's there's a lot of stuff I'm still catching up on. And from about baby. 2000 <laughs> all the way up until about two years ago, I am behind on all that. So I've been working my way through it. And um, so, so that's you've never read Secret Wars by, by Hickman? Nope. How about you, Bueller? Nope, I missed that one. Oh, man. Wow. It, it came out. It came out during the time I wasn't collecting. Okay. Yeah. There's so much stuff that I missed. Oh, that stuff and is so good. You got to read the Hickman yeah. FF run, like Fantastic Four and Future Foundation. It yeah. all ties together. You get the complete collections. It, it all puts them in order. It yeah. leads to this secret war where, like, the whole reality of everything dies. And Reed and and T'Challa, like, nobody can figure out how to save it except for Victor. Yeah. Victor is the only one that can save the universe. And there's this great moment because now he's created a new Marvel universe where he is God. It's God doom. And there's two great moments in there. Well, there's a bunch, but there are two in particular. There's a moment where Cyclops shows up possessed by the Phoenix and dooms looks at him and says, your dream is dead and burns him away. What? And then there's a moment where Thanos shows up. And Thanos is from the 616. He survives and makes it through. And Thanos comes up to him and he goes, Doom, we are here. We're going to stop you. And Doom looks at him and Victor's like, tell me, do you have a gauntlet right now? And Thanos is just, <laughs> right? And he seriously Mortal Kombat's this dude and rips his spine out of Thanos. <laughs> because he's got God powers. He's collected right. all the powers. He's absorbed all the powers of all the Beyonders. So he's like God doom. He's literally a God at this point. Yeah. That's crazy. Your dream is dead. And tell me, do you have a gauntlet right now? Because that was my <laughs> argument about Thanos. When people are like, Thanos is the best Marvel villain. I'm like, really? Take away the gauntlet. What is he? He's not Dr. Doom. Nope. So that Secret Wars run by Hickman, do I need to get anything else besides that? You need to read the, it would be benefit. Okay. You could just read the Secret Wars run by Hickman, and that's fine. Okay. But it would be beneficial to read his Avengers run that led into it. All right. Which he did Avengers and New Avengers. I don't know how it's collected now, but he did both books of the Avengers, and they lead into this. More okay. so New Avengers. Like, read the New okay. Avengers stuff, and it leads into this. But, yeah. Yeah. Hickman's New Avengers into Secret Wars. That's really all you need. But it would also be beneficial to check out his... uh. Fantastic Four run. Yeah, yeah. I'm so behind on Fantastic Four, it's not even funny. So, I mean, I, I haven't even touched the new stuff, actually. So. Well, there's another great Doctor Doom moment, too, where, like, in the Mark Miller run, where there's this whole thing about Doom's Apprentice and Master of Doom, and y'all need to read that, too. It's uh, it's uh, <laughs> Mark Miller and Brian Hitch. That's really good stuff, too. That's I, some I, love, of the I love both those guys. So that's, that's a great Doom run. It really is. It's all one Doom story, and it makes a lot of sense, and it even ties into uh, Old Man Logan just a little bit. Awesome stuff. Well, would you would you uh, do me a favor and um, in your Doom moments, uh, maybe drop a little um, outline, send it to me on Facebook or email it to me so that I can put it in the comments below this, so that when people watch this afterwards, we got some references that they can go back and read, and I'll do the same thing with some of the stuff that I've mentioned as well. Oh, absolutely. And we should do that with Daredevil, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, that way people have a reference, you know, if they want to go check some of this stuff out. Um, you know, I mean, that's what we're doing here, right? We're 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 showing our love for it because we want people to read the stuff. Yes. And, uh, and so definitely let's 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 uh, give them everything that they need to be able to pick some of that stuff up. So 
Oh, this is awesome stuff. Yes, yeah, Sam says, Bueller, you had all those Secret Wars books a year ago. Yeah, they all got sent out in the Bueller boxes. That's right. You think you read them? Well, here's the thing. I was buying in bulk, man. I was just yeah. getting all these books, and it's like, I literally, it was like one month I had, you know, like 100 books, and at the end of the month I bought 3,000 books. So like 3,000, I'm obviously not going to read all the books, you know, uh, and they're all back issues. That I would. Was, what's wrong, wrong with you? I would. What's that? I would. Why? What? What's wrong with you? Read three. Read three thousand books. It's easy. <laughs> my goal is to have someone read them to me. That's my goal for, for later this summer. If I don't, right now, I'm working on not having to buy books. The next step is just having not me having to read the books and just have someone read them to me. What do you like, <laughs> what do you handle a bot. That's Bob. We'll talk later. <laughs> Maybe we, maybe you could talk to Marvel Bueller and uh and see if you can get some audio books going, right? That'd be awesome. That'd be really cool. Yeah, you yeah. Put them on Kindle, all that kind of stuff. Be part of Audible. Why? Why not? Right. <laughs> I think I had all the a bunch of the variants with the blister pack type thing with the look like the old Secret War character. Yeah, I got those because I love those Secret Wars toys. That's the only one I have on card, and it's Doctor. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, got a cool. it's got a hole in the blister though. <laughs> you oh, could probably know. reach in and touch the figure, but because it's still in package, it's the yeah. only Doctor Doom Secret Wars figure I've ever had that has all the uh, the the lining on his on his chest. Oh, you can cool. see every bit of everything there. So that's yeah. really cool. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, I used to have a lot of books. I sold them all. <laughs> it had me too. <laughs> you know? So. Yeah, they, you have to. They come back. That's the way I look at it. They they find their way back. Someone told me this a long time ago, and they were like, anything that you have that you love, you'll see again, so let it go. Exactly. That's 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 a good point. Yeah. <laughs> it may not be in your hands, but you'll see it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Pick, just pick <laughs> it, you know, and just pick what you are into and what you want to keep and let everything else go. Enjoy yeah. it for a bit and let it go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's wisdom right there. Wisdom. <laughs> it's the only way to be in this industry as a collector and continue on for so long. For yeah. sure. Otherwise, your room just gets full of stuff, and it <laughs> you run yeah, out of room. Yeah, and your lady and your lady's like, "Let that shit go. Just get rid of it right now." Absolutely. Wait, what'd yeah. you just say? I said you're having that. You just told me the other day. You just, I gotta get rid of some of these books. I do. I'm like, man. You're not gonna do it, man. You're gonna it's like I gotta start getting rid of books, man. I got to a place where the the uh, um, the hobby stopped paying for itself. I got to get back to that place. <laughs> There you go. Well, that's what you get when you order these uh, variants from C Clayton Crane. Paid, yeah, I know. Huh? <laughs> paid three times the cover price. Well, hey, man, look. <laughs> that's the latest one I got, right? Oh, oh that's, yeah. that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, I love his stuff. You yeah, know, cool. I'm not a variant guy, but I did buy three copies of that Wolverine book because I'm a cover A guy, so I had to get cover A. Mm -hmm. And then I had to get the Alex Ross cover because I looked dope. And then I had to get the die cut cover because how cool was that? The die yeah, cut. the die cut cover is amazing, and I can't wait to get one. I heard Sam got one. I'm thinking about getting another Alex Ross cover and making my own die cut. Oh, there you go. It. Just just cut into it. <laughs> there, there's a uh, Comics Pro exclusive cover also. Is it really? Oh, wow. Yeah, that I was. I've been. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that work, that looks really. What's that? Who did it? Um, it's actually the main cover of the, the regular issue. It's the A cover, but it's a different col coloration of it. Oh, okay. So it looks looks a little bit different and stuff. It's like a green color. Have y'all read that yet? I have. have I read what? Which one? Wolverine. Uh, no, I'll actually be reading uh, the bulk of it tonight. I read the... I, read I the know you read the second part. half, right? Yeah, I read the second half. I haven't read the first half yet. Oh, man. Adam Kubert is better than ever. Really? Yeah. Oh, Better God. than ever. That stuff is so good. Awesome. Awesome. Can't wait to get into it. You know what I read today? What's that? Folklords number four. Oh, you dog. Screw you, man. dog. I haven't even man. gotten that yet. <laughs> man, I got to tell you, it's it's really cool, Bob. So you, so you got to read Folklords four and meet Matt Kent. Not yet. He, I, 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 I saw him. I didn't get a chance to talk with him. I'm trying to. Matt Kent's a super cool, cool dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's a super cool dude. Yeah. I'll be right back. Let me grab something. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, I read Folklore's number four today. I was waiting and stuff, and uh, 
And, uh, you know, there's only five issues. Uh -huh. They got to wrap it up. So they, uh, it's, it's a, it's a fun read and it definitely unfolds what's going on as far as why the, uh, main character is seeing what he's seeing mm -hmm. and visions, but it doesn't end there. It kind of takes a whole new twist with a bunch of different things going on. It's, it's a, the last couple pages like, Whoa, that was, that was fun. So nice. you'll, you'll like it. What are y'all talking about? The folklore number four. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Matt so. Kent's super cool. He did this book called Mind Management right here. What? I met him last year, and he actually did this cool like sketch in there for me. Oh, nice. Of the character. He's such a super cool guy. And uh, another fellow PCP or Brian Weaver, a big fan of Matt, and has uh, met him a few times. Um, Matt is just the coolest. So you're meeting him tomorrow? I hope he's um I haven't seen him. That's the thing. He uh, he put on his Twitter that he's at Comics Pro. I mean, there's a lot of people. Yeah, there. I saw that. And uh, so, but I haven't seen him. But I don't know if I'm. I, I don't know if I'd recognize him if I saw him. So he just looks like a nerdy white dude. Well, yeah, there's a lot of those there. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? But uh, I think he's. Oh, I thought I saw him over at the DC booth because his book just came out, The Bang. Yeah. Uh, and so I thought he was over there, and uh, but I met with the DC or not DC, sorry, Dark Horse, sorry, Dark Horse people today, and he he was he he wasn't there when I was sitting with him. So maybe tomorrow I'll run into him. He's a super cool cat, and he does really great work. And that Bang book is really cool, especially if you're a Bond yeah. fan. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I got to read that one on my lunch break today. I'll tell you another one I got to read on my lunch break today that really uh, blew me away and nothing really happened inside of the book is uh, Joe Hill's new one, The Plunge. Yeah, that was a cool I book. dug that book. That was really, really well done. I thought the dialogue was great. I thought that, the, the, the you know, I was, I was right there with the characters, a lot of character development. Uh, and I and the, it was just really, really well laid out. And then, you know, really nothing happened until the very last page. And, and I, I was on board. It was good. It's like the first like a, like the first sixty or seventy five pages of a really good novel. Exactly you know, that first issue. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome stuff. I can't. I can't wait to get the next one. But yeah, his stuff's been amazing. Did you like the Bang Book, Bob? I did. I I really dug it. That was so cool. <laughs> That's so funny. Do you like the alliteration there? there did you like are. that Bang Book, Bob? <laughs> as long as we're on a bus at the end of that sentence, we're all good. Oh gosh, man. <laughs> oh man. Here we go. <laughs> See, I knew this would be fun. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's good stuff. Well, um, you gentlemen, if you want to go ahead and keep chopping it up, you can, but I do have to get going. Uh, I do have to say this has been absolutely amazing. Uh, Robbie, I appreciate uh, you hanging out with me and talking some Daredevil, talking some Dr. Doom. I really appreciate you, man. And uh, like I said, man, I, I always enjoy the show. That's how I start my week off. And uh, thank you for so much content. Uh, you're an amazing guy, and I appreciate you, man. Oh, thank you, buddy. I really do appreciate you. You and Bueller start my week. So I'm just super grateful and thankful to be here and be able to, like, I'll talk about Dr. Doom anytime. And and just about comic books in general, like, anytime. In fact, uh, Bob, I'm doing a... Uh, a show next Friday night on my channel. It's going to be a bunch of different people. We're going to see how many people we can get involved. I think we can only get a certain amount of people, but we'll, we'll work it out. Mm -hmm. But I want to do, I want to start doing a rotating um, favorite comic books of the month type thing. Right? Oh, awesome. Where we all get together. We talk about our favorite comic books of that month, maybe like a top five that you want to recommend or whatever. And uh, I'm going to start doing that this upcoming Friday night. I think I'm, I plan on doing it at 8 PM my time, which is central. Okay. Um, so that would be six y'alls. Mm -hmm. Um, but both of y'all obviously invited and a spot saved for you. And then I think I we're going to rotate it. I think Dylan has, uh, said that he wants to do the second one. Um, but we can keep bouncing around, but I think if we could get all of us together, as many of us YouTubers as we can, as far as comic books go, um, to talk about our favorite comic books of the month, I think that'd be a really fun thing to do. And I would love to have both of y'all involved with that. That'd be awesome. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, count count me in. <laughs> I will. I, I got to say something real quick. I appreciate you letting me crash the party a little bit. Absolutely. Everyone knows that me and me and Bob do the coffee video, and we have a lot of fun doing that. 
and we do some reviews. We haven't done some reviews in a long, in a few weeks. I don't know if we'll, we'll get time to do more, but here's the thing. This guy right here, Robbie from Pop Culture Philosophers, his reviews are so good. Yes, they are. We don't need to do them. Just go watch his stuff. <laughs> it's literally must watch YouTube. I watch it every, as soon as it pops up Tuesday night, dude, because I'm working on my video, mm -hmm. it's playing as soon as it pops up. Yeah. It's such a hard thing to do to review a book and not spoil the book. And this guy's mastered it. Absolutely. And it's, I, I've tried to do it. I can't do it. I, we end up spoiling the book. Robbie gives a review that doesn't spoil the book and makes you either want to buy it or not buy it. It's an awesome review. Thank you, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you for checking it out. And thank you for saying that. It's, it's, it's a labor of love. I, I love comics. I always have. It's my job in real life, not just in this fantasy world we live in on YouTube, but uh, it's my job in real life to sell comics. And I've always been passionate about it. I've always been passionate about independent comic books and trying to get the word out there about things that people wouldn't nor normally notice. So uh, to see so many people like check out the video and comment on it and to hear you say that, Bueller, means a lot to me. So I really do appreciate that. You, you don't even take a breath. You literally for 45 <laughs> minutes, boom, boom. It's like one after another. Yeah, there's, there's, and there's no plan there. You know, I just, I just read the comics and then I'm like, all right, let's turn the lights on and let's do it. And that's awesome. Yeah. And if I mess up, as many people have noticed, I just keep rolling. I don't even care. It's just you got, whatever. You got a new camera, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I noticed it right away. A few weeks back, I was like, Oh, he's got a new camera. I can tell the picture quality is better. Well, thank you. Yeah. 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 The PCP army helped out with that. So that was That's super awesome. cool. The only problem is the camera only records 30 minutes at a time. Yeah, so I, now, I, yeah. now I cannot do the weekly comic book review in one take. Yeah. I actually have to split it up. So I have a timer yeah. right there and it, and it will let me go. It goes off at a certain time and, I'm like, all right. And I'll, just I'll, be, I'll be watching for that. <laughs> you should. There's always like at least one small little cut in each one now. But, oh wow, cool. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, as Herminio says, the uh, the camera's called the Reggie because uh, our good friend Reggie uh, gave probably the majority of the money for that camera. Oh, and, is that uh, double, double, double G cool Reggie? Double, double G, G Reggie, yeah. Double G Reggie Simmons. Oh, that guy's yeah. awesome, man. Super cool guy. Yep. Super cool. I cannot wait to. Make it up to Chicago again. Uh, it's a beautiful city. I can't wait to make there again, maybe for a possible C2E2. I always get jealous when I see all the people at C2E2. Yeah. And uh, I would love to meet him there. So, uh, sure yeah. Is. And I can't wait to make it to Portland to see you guys. I was telling Bob Bueller, but I've always had a fascination with Portland. And yeah. uh, I want to get there soon. I want to hang out with you guys, drink some coffee, and, and talk about comics and do a video. That would be yeah, super fun. Absolutely. That'd be I've awesome. never, I've never been that far west. The furthest west I've been is San Antonio, and that's miles away from from Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> My, and maybe we can like find like Bendis and Max somewhere, and Greg Rucka, and we can like yeah. scope them out somewhere. Yeah, we can just go to their house, man. Stand out there. Yeah, I'll know where, yeah, know where they live. We'll, just, <laughs> we'll stand I'll out there with a, we'll stand out there with a boombox, like it say anything. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That's maybe what it is. Playing the Daredevil theme song from the the movie. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do a tour of all the creators. We'll go to Joshua Williamson, then we'll go to uh, Bendis. We'll go to David Walker. We'll go to all their homes. Kind It'd of, be like one of them Hollywood double decker bus tours. Yeah. What do you, what <laughs> do you <laughs> say if they saw like a like a van outside their door? Come and book creator tour. <laughs> 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 You'll find where Bendis came up with the idea to age up Jonathan Kent. Right, right. <laughs> we got a bunch of them out here, though. That's for sure. Yeah, you do. And you have a lot of great shops, too. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The in my town, there's yeah. one shop, pretty much. And, and it's me. So I'm thankful for that. It's us. <laughs> so, But, uh, uh, yeah. And, and I know you guys are going to MegaCon, but that's the same weekend as the con we're having here in Huntsville. Oh, is it really? And we have Mark Wade, we got Jim Starlin, we got uh, uh, Jason David Frank. He was the Green Ranger. I don't know if you guys are. I don't know if you're Power Rangers age, but that's pretty ba. Um, uh, Mark Wade, Jim Starlin, and Chris Claremont's coming back. This is the second time at the expo. He's nice. super cool dude. So I'm looking forward to that again. 
That's awesome stuff. Uh, you know, when Power Rangers came out is when my son, you know, he was totally into it. And I used to be uh, a pretty bad dude. So I had some connections and, uh, uh, you know, at a time when you could not get any of those toys, I got the whole freaking product line for that kid for, for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Dad of the year right there. Absolutely, man. I was being... <laughs> But I used to watch the show with them all the time, so I loved it all. Yeah, I love that stuff. I've met Jason David Frank before. I've met a bunch of the Power Rangers, and uh, it's just always been an obsession of mine. I was probably a little bit too old, I think, at the time. I was like 13 mm -hmm. when it came out. But, man, I've been thinking a lot lately, like, what's more important, comic books or toys? And I'm like, hmm comics, but I can't get rid of my toys. I, I'm a toy fiend, too. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Bueller is just like a robot right now. I know. What's up with that? you got a couple of different images. <laughs> what's going on? I don't know what's going on, man. My, my area is brown. Earth 2. There you go. <laughs> my, my internet is crashing. I don't know what's going on. I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. I messed uh, him up when I said Power Rangers. <laughs> But yeah, we'll definitely have to get you out here, Robbie. Um, I know we got the Washington State Summer Con. I don't know if that's any possibility of getting. I it. think that's the same weekend as Heroes Con. Is it really? Like, what's up with y'all's cons oh, that you're man. going to doing? Like, I, I went to Heroes Con for the first time last year. That's where I met Matt for the uh, the mind management thing right there. Nice. And uh, I met you, uh, Stan Sakai, who did oh. Yusaki Ujimbo. He did a little sketch in the book for me. Um, so Heroes Con's a big deal, and it's a it's a lot quicker of a drive than than Washington. But <laughs> I looked at that website; that's a hell of a lineup, isn't it? That's a and hell of a lineup. He's not done. Yeah, I bet. I imagine, but yeah. that's a big deal. That's a cool lineup. I'm actually thinking, how can I get to Washington? Yeah, I, I don't know if you're coming. you're probably not familiar with that area, obviously, but it's like a really small. He locked up again. Damn, Bueller. Come on. Pay your, pay your internet bill. <laughs> Everybody needs to get on his Patreon quick. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. I, I better call it good, man. My, I, my internet's crashing. I'm going to let you guys go. I think we're wrapping up anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. I just want to say thank you all very much. Uh, it was awesome being here with you, Robbie. Bueller, you can crash our party any day. And, uh, but yeah, best DD, um, the best Daredevil runs and best Doctor Doom moments. It's been an awesome, fun night. And uh, man, we, we, we definitely got to do this more often. Um, we'll leave some uh, um, information down in the comments for everybody to uh, pick up on those reads. And uh, definitely go check them out because uh, that's some of the best reading you're going to find uh, in, in comic books, if, especially if you're in, into the superhero thing. So um, but again, I appreciate you guys. And, uh, I don't know you guys got anything else that you want to add. Subscribe to everything comics. If you haven't already, I uh, appreciate that. This and is also, a great channel for comic books. Thank you. And also pop culture philosophers and comics of Bueller, please go ahead and make sure you guys are all, <laughs> I appreciate you guys very much. Anyway, y'all have a wonderful night. We'll definitely be uh, seeing y'all soon. And, uh, yeah, we'll do this again soon. All right. Take care, guys. <laughs>